Every once in a while, a game comes out that challenges the status quo, and earns an intensely devoted following because of it. Undertale totally flipped the script when it debuted last year, and it's already being voted one of the best games ever. I'm Russ from Game Grumps, and I'm here to help the leaderboard countdown the 107 facts you should know about Undertale, so you can game smarter. Let's get started. The Kickstarter for Undertale had a goal of $5,000, but ended up with a profit of 10 times that amount, $51,124 to be exact. Undertale was designed, composed, and written by Toby Fox, with additional artwork by Temi Chang. Toby Fox would only work with a small team out of fear of relying on others that might slow down Undertale's creation. According to Toby Fox, Undertale took 2.7 years to produce. Before working on Undertale, Toby Fox was famous for providing music for the webcomic Homestuck. Toby Fox is also the lead composer and created all the music for the game. And oh boy, is the music good. Toby Fox's love of music sparked in high school when he wanted to recreate songs from the video game Chrono Trigger on his piano. Undertale boasts the great soundtrack tag on Steam. The battle theme for Undertale was done with little iteration, being quickly arranged by Toby after coming up with the song. The song with the most iteration was Undertale, which had three different versions before finally finding a usable one. Undertale's soundtrack is largely influenced by the songs in many Super Nintendo RPGs. Noted for his musical talents, Toby Fox has been contracted to write some of the music for the Homestuck video game once it releases. Toby Fox got into game development early at the age of 10, when he and his brothers downloaded RPG Maker off the internet and started messing around. A year later, Toby Fox moved on to Game Maker software and began practicing game development there, eventually sticking with it for the creation of Undertale. According to Toby Fox, Undertale is the only actual game I've made that isn't either a bad ROM hack or a joke RPG game. Toby Fox never expected Undertale to get as big as it did, thinking only people like him would enjoy it. It's difficult to pinpoint the inspiration for Undertale's humor, as Toby Fox has stated that it is a culmination of many things, ranging from dumb Twitter jokes to Mr. Bean. Undertale's short playtime comes from Toby Fox hoping to create a game that he can actually finish. For those who are curious, Undertale is around six hours long. Another reason for Undertale's short length was Toby Fox's comparison of games and movies. He said, you can watch a movie that is two hours long, and it can emotionally move you and feel complete. He also believed that every core location in the game would only be 15 minutes long. The Nintendo game Earthbound has had the biggest influence on Toby Fox's RPG creation. Toby Fox would hang around the forums during his early internet career. Did you talk to Toby on the Earthbound forums? If Toby Radiation Fox rings a bell, it could be possible. Maybe you were the inspiration for Sans, you never know. During Undertale's creation, Toby Fox was very opposed to grinding to complete the game, and tried to make it as optional as possible. And from the bottom of our hearts, we thank you for that, Toby. Another trope Toby Fox tried to avoid was to not include any types of fetch quests, as he was not a fan of backtracking. With the handy inclusion of the river person, this is much less of a worry. Who is that guy anyway? Two dogs and a coat? After playing the JRPG Xenoblade Chronicles for 80 hours, Toby Fox ensured that Undertale would be a short game. Toby Fox released Undertale when he was only 24 years old. Toby Fox said he hopes to make another game after Undertale, but is unsure if it will be a sequel or a clean break from the series. The system requirements for the Undertale soundtrack feature some very impressive stats, including 999 gigabyte RAM memory, a fast processor that can play 9,000 songs per second, and a special copy of Windows 90 million. I guess this is what happens when Steam makes you put requirements on MP3 files. The songs Undertale and Hopes and Dreams both took the most effort to make and are some of Toby Fox's favorite songs on the soundtrack. The song Megalovania was actually created before the idea of Undertale started. It was first released as a song for an Earthbound Halloween hack. Then it was remixed for a webcomic Homestuck before finally landing on the Undertale soundtrack. Over 90% of Undertale's soundtrack was composed for the game. The songs that were composed for other projects then eventually used are Fallen Down, Another Medium, Heartache, Bone Trousel, and Meh. <laughs> <laughs> Undertale originated when Toby Fox tried to create a fun battle system in Game Maker, eventually leading him to make a game around it. The basis for the battle system was inspired by the Shin Megami Tensei series. As Toby Fox said, I always liked talking to monsters in Shin Megami Tensei, so I started programming a battle system where you could talk to your foes and convince them not to fight. When I started making the game, the idea that you could just beat it without killing anyone just kind of evolved naturally. Toby Fox would compose the songs first before programming. He said that having music helps 
me decide how the scene would go. The only song that was composed after the event was programmed was the credit song. The demo for Undertale was first sent to a video game merchandising website Fangamer on May 2nd, 2013. A public demo of the game was later released on May 23rd, 2013. During the Kickstarter, two people who reached the $500 reward tier were able to have their fightable monster in-game. These monsters turned out to be Glide and Muffet. The $1,000 reward tier for Undertale allowed for someone's fan troll to become canon in the game's world. This character was later revealed to be so sorry. Flowey's iconic laugh is a reused laugh asset that can be found in other games like PlayStation title Tomba. Flowey's laugh is also used in the Homestuck song, The Lordling, which was composed by Toby Fox and came out two years before Undertale was released. Flowey is one of the few characters to have a spoken line. When exiting the ruins during a genocide run, Flowey will end his conversation with an audible voice clip saying, That's a wonderful idea! Toriel's name is a pun on the word tutorial. Toriel herself also acts as a parody of tutorial characters. You can find Sans and Hotlands selling hot dogs and hot cats. If you buy a hot dog without any room in your inventory, Sans will place the hot dog on your head. The total stack of hot dogs can reach up to 29. Papyrus is the only character in the game whose dialogue doesn't start with an asterisk. What a rebel. Undernet, the underground's number one social network, acts as a pseudo Facebook in Undertale. Although you can never access it, other characters can, and they each have their own own username. Papyrus is Cool Skeleton 95, Undyne is Strongfish91, Nabstablooke is Nabstablooke22, and Alphys is Alphys. When Metaton sinks the protagonist near the end of the game, the program window for Undertale renames itself to Undertale the Musical. Asgore's favorite type of tea is Golden Flower Tea, made from various golden flowers the player encounters throughout the game. If the player types the name Frisk at the beginning of the game, they will enter Hard Mode. Hard Mode has significantly tougher enemies, but only lasts the length of the original demo. A full hard mode is coming, maybe, uh, don't count on it. In hard mode, you'll also be taken through the ruins of the game, fighting monsters ripped right from the core. Everyone's favorite monster, Jerry, does not show up in the credits of an Undertale pacifist playthrough. The Tem Shop is the only place where you can sell items. There are three types of endings in Undertale, neutral, true pacifist, and genocide. True pacifist can be attained by not killing anyone, and genocide can be attained by killing everything you see. A fourth secret ending only comes if the game has bugged out or has been hacked. When starting up, the player will get a call from Sans, who tells the player to contact the developer if this is an error. Sans also calls you a dirty hacker, and then hangs up the phone. Rude. Muffet was designed by Michelle Chazowski, who also works in a webcomic called Ava's Demon, which is very neat. Check it out. The annoying dog that can be found frequently throughout Undertale is supposed to represent Toby Fox himself. This can be further seen in the Greenlight trailer, where Toby Fox appears as the annoying dog. If you idle for too long during the Temi fight, Temi's face will vibrate so hard that it will slowly leave her body. Ouch. Instead of turning into dust like other monsters in Undertale, when Tissunderplane dies, it crashes to the ground and explodes, which is both very violent and very spectacular. If you inspect the walls of the four froggit room near the start of the game, you can find the fourth ant-sized frog hiding in a wall. He even waves at you. Hello, tiny frog. Only see two frogs in the room? That's because you've been skipping dialogue. The froggit who teaches you about the text skip won't appear if you've been skipping dialogue prior. My Gosp and Jerry are the only monsters that never appear on their own, and only with other enemies. If you kill Snowdrake, his cooler brother Childrake will replace him. Childrake's got a pair of rad sunglasses. He's also searching for his dead brother. Petting Lesser Dog will allow you to spare him. It also makes his head grow. Continue petting Lesser Dog and his head will rise off the screen and back down, past the dialogue box where no dog has gone before. You can find Lesser Dog again after sparing him in Snowden. He'll be building snow sculptures. The more you pet him in battle, the bigger the sculptures will get. According to the game's files, Shiren is the small fish on top of the body. The body is named Shiren agent in the game's files, suggesting Shiren's body is actually her talent agent. This can further be seen in the official Metaton poster, where Shiren and her detached agent are seen in the audience. When two pyropes appear on screen, the dialogue text box will read, The Rare and Threatening Double Davis. When fighting pyrope, there is no limit to heating up the battle, as the screen will just continue to get wavier and wavier. The Royal Guards are confirmed through a phone conversation through Undyne to be a bunny and a dragon. Starting the fight with So Sorry will randomly give you one one of five hats, these being a beret, a party hat, a fedora, a jester hat, or a tiny little cowboy hat. Greater Dog and Adogeny both have the same strategy to be spared. Beckon, pet, play, 
pet, pet. This should work on other dogs as well in the game and in real life. The little guy who appears during the Reaper Bird's attacks was confirmed to be called Everyman by Toby Fox in a tweet. And boy, is he having the time of his life with those butterflies. Any dog-related battle in Undertale can actually be solved very quickly by using the stick when in combat. Strangely enough, the stick also works in Papyrus's boss battle. However, it doesn't end the fight. Instead, Papyrus returns the stick in his mouth. Good skeleton. Most special text in Undertale is highlighted with yellow text. If you tell one of the frogs in the runes that you don't like the yellow text, he will remove the highlight entirely, making it more difficult to spare monsters. Talk to the frog again and he'll offer to bring back the colored text, only this time in pink, because all the monsters still have their pink text from last year. But whatever happened to the yellow text? After making the change, head to the garbage dump to find a consequence of your actions. All those yellow names are in the trash, are you proud? If you check Undertale's process name while it is running, it will report itself as Leading Brand Undertale Type Software in the Task Manager. If you try naming yourself as a character from the game, you will be denied, with a special message from the character you try to use. If you spare every dog monster in Snowden, you can find them all later hanging out together at Grillby's. Dog Party! Ever wonder how to get into that mysterious dog door outside of Snowden Village? Avoid all the names during the special thanks section of the credits and the door will open up. This door leads to the developer's room, where you can find Toby Fox hard at work on Undertale. You cannot die while fighting Papyrus. If you lose, he'll just throw you in his garage. If you keep losing, he'll eventually just give you the option to stop fighting. When visiting Napstablook's house, he'll invite you in to participate in his family tradition of lying on the ground and feeling like garbage. If you do this and wait for 20 seconds, a trippy experience will commence. If you leave some of the music on in Napstablook's house, then leave. The music will continue playing throughout the area, and it will comment on how spooky the music is, eventually running away because of how spooky Spooktune really is. Metaton can never kill you during any of his televised bits. Alphys will always appear to save the day, somehow. This is very apparent when trying to defuse all the bombs, as the timer will move extremely slow as it reaches zero. Still have that spider cider or spider donut from the ruins? Use it during the fight with Moffat and she will end the battle prematurely. The mystery key that you can buy from Caddy and Braddy will open up the house that sits next to Nabs de Bluke's place in the waterfall. This was originally Metaton's house and reading the diaries inside will reveal more about Metaton's past. Eating any of the MTT Burger Shack food during the Metaton EX fight will give you a large boost in ratings and a sharp decrease in hunger. During the Metaton EX fight, he'll ask you to write an essay. Typing out legs in any capacity will net you 350 points to your rating and is apparently the correct answer. Meanwhile, if you write Toby in any capacity, you'll net 300 points. Metaton will even comment that it sounds sexy. Oh, Toby, you dog. Seriously, though, you're literally a dog in this game. If you eat the butterscotch pie Toriel bakes you during the Asgore fight, it will permanently decrease his attack and defense along with his happiness. Feeling charitable? You can send the Tem shop owner to college for 1,000 gold. Doing this will allow Temi to sell you her special Temi armor. The cost decreases every time you die. The real question here is, how does Temi know you're dying? Sans's room is only accessible if you can convince him to give you his key. To do this, reset the game five times when Sans judges your actions in the final corridor. On the fifth reset, Sans will give you the key to his room. Inside is a bountiful treasure of dirty socks. Taking this a step further inside Sans's room is another key. This key opens up the room behind Sans and Papyrus's house. The location is small but contains a covered up machine and blueprints written in strange symbols. If you spar with the training dummy enough at the start of the game, it will tire it of your shenanigans and fly off screen. If you're having trouble with one of Papyrus's puzzles, why not ask the man himself? Do so during one of the X puzzles and Papyrus will reveal a switch hidden under a nearby tree that will solve it for you. Only cheaters flip the switch. If Greater Dog is just too much for you to handle, try ignoring him. He will continue to inch closer until he ultimately decides that you are too boring and should have used the stick. The Mad Dummy will always attack the player, unless they are on a genocide run. If you are evil enough to go on this route, the ghost possessing the Mad Dummy will use all of his anger to fuse with his body, fulfilling his lifelong wish and becoming the Glad Dummy. There is an unused sprite for a spell button in the game's files. Toby Fox has said that it was originally going to be a feature Feature, but he ultimately decided against it. Toby Fox reused some of the melodies in his songs in order for the player to gain a sense of nostalgia from it. So when a different variation of the song would occur, the player would feel all the emotions they had when the song first played. Toby Fox also said that it was way easier to reuse melodies. If you want to chow down on some delicious fried snow, Sans will sell you some in Snowden for five gold. However, he'll keep raising the price, eventually reaching 5,000 gold. Hack the game and give yourself this 
money, and Sands will still refuse to sell you the snow, saying it has too much sentimental value. In Snowden, you can meet a friendly snowman, who asks you to take a piece of him with you on your journey, so he can see the world. If you're going through the genocide run, however, you can keep taking pieces off him until there's nothing left. Gruesome. The demo page on Undertale's website is titled Undertale, Delicious Free Sample. A character named WD Gaster only appears when editing the fun value in the game's code. There has been much speculation on who Gaster is, but Toby Fox has not confirmed anything so far. Holding out on us, eh, Toby? You can't stop a niche part of the internet from finding out all your secrets. Naming the player character Gaster will reset the game, and then show the player a series of Wingdings text. What could it mean? Playing the ball game in Snowden will reward you with a colored flag. The different colors, red, aqua, orange, blue, purple, green, and yellow, all correspond with the hearts of the humans who have previously fallen down into Mount Ebbet. If you're feeling down in your luck and looking for some extra cash, search each snow puff before the fight with the greater dog. The last search will reward you with 30 gold. The abandoned quiche that can be found underneath a bench in Snowden refers to the time when Toby Fox found a similar baked good hiding under a bench in his own life. Thanks for watching Leaderboard's 107 Facts You Should Know About Undertale. If you liked this one, perhaps you'd like some of these other shows. And if there's another game we need to cover, let us know in the comments. This has been Ross from Game Grumps. If you want to check out Game Grumps, you can go to Game Grumps. Okay, bye!